is Natalie Lee, checking in with you guys as we head into 2023. Can you believe the new year is already upon us? It's blowing my mind. This past year went by so quickly. I wanted to hop on here because this is the perfect opportunity to do a video for you guys to start the year off right as you're planning your home renovations and design uh, projects in your home. So what I want to do is give you guys five design trends and tips that we are seeing in home renovation, as well as five mistakes that I hope you guys avoid when you go to do your next project. First up is lighting. I'm actually sitting here in my kitchen, which I renovated this year, which is a really good experience. It helped me feel the pain that my clients feel and get back in touch with them on that level. <laughs> but uh, we have layered lighting in our kitchen, and that's something I want you guys to consider whether you're doing a kitchen, bathroom, basement, or just refreshing things in your house, is always have layered lighting. In our kitchen here, we actually have the under cabinet lighting, we have the vent hood has a light, we have, let me scroll up here, you've got our pendant lights here, which always choose a cool fun pendant if you'll see here we've only got two two is sort of the number now versus three and these are actually pretty large they're like 15 or 17 inch pendants which we have a large island so it helps balance it out so along with those you'll also see we have can lights all the way up there as well so we have multiple ways that we are lighting the space which is really great because then you can add dimmers to everything and really set the tone for what you're trying to achieve and whatever you're doing in the space a lot of times we use these under cabinet lighting uh, as night lights or if we're just hanging out in the living room which is just right in front of me you can leave little accent lights on it. it really makes the space feel warm and cozy so if you're going to go ahead and do a renovation make sure to plan your lighting and if you're working with us let's chat about it and see what we can do to make the space feel more three-dimensional cozy and amply lit next up is tile this is a huge thing that i'm super excited about that the era of the plain white subway tile is behind us please can we please stop doing that <laughs> uh, right now we are seeing heavy trend in geometric tile if you see here in my kitchen i'll try and get out of the frame we just have a really cool simple neutral color geometric shape to our tile it's really nice because it adds a texture, it adds some dimension, it really gives a different vibe to the space. You don't have to do just a neutral color, great pops of color in. Here's a kitchen that we just did with a beautiful green uh, tile. And this isn't just for the kitchen. If you're doing a bathroom renovation, it's also time to think about some 3D tiles. So here's a tile that we used in a bathroom just recently. It's a beautiful textured metallic tile and we used it up behind the mirror, which is great for wipeability, keeping clean, and it really adds a richness to the space. And right here is a tile that we're actually doing in a bathroom right now, which you guys will get to see pictures of that coming up. But this will be in the shower surround. So it'll really add some dimension, a fun shape to the space, uh, which we will tie into lighting and different cool things. So have fun with your tile heading into 2023. Gone is the plain white subway tile. If you're going to do a subway tile, make sure it's got a, a stamp texture on it or it's in a fun, vibrant color. Or try laying it vertically instead of horizontally to help bring that forward into the design style. So again, geometric shapes, pops of fun color, textured tile, metallics. Let's have some fun with that going into 2023. The next trend we are seeing in kitchen renovations is getting rid of the double oven. Can you believe it? The decades of double ovens and everybody wanting the double oven up in their wall uh, are over. We are taking that out of almost every kitchen that we do. If you see here in our house, we actually now have a 48 inch range. It has the two ovens. There's a smaller one and a larger one, uh, but this works perfectly for us. And the reason we did it is because we wanted to capitalize on our cabinet space. So I have my little helper over here. If you guys see our double ovens used to be right here. Hey Noah, can you go open that for them? What we decided to do in this space is take out the double ovens that used to be right there and do a concealed coffee space and microwave area. We don't use that space very much. So this was the best way for us to use the space in our house and make it the most effective. So we are doing this a lot. And truth be told, these doors stay open most of the time. But when you have people over, you just pull them out, close them, and the mess is gone. The fourth trend we will talk about is color tones. Everybody spent, you know, five years getting their house all turned to grays and whites and sort of cool tones. That tide has officially shifted people. I'm going to tell you, you can still do a gray, but it needs to be a warm gray. We are back to warm colors. We're going to have some beiges creeping in. Brown is making its way back. It's really great to see some of those warmer tones creep back in. Same in countertop material and flooring. If you see here in my kitchen, uh, we have a, it's called a Taj Mahal. It's just a beautiful gray neutral, but it has some gray tones in it, but mainly there's some brown tones and some creams and some whites. So 
you gotta let go of the dark gray colors that are cold and just warm things back up. Whites are still gonna be very popular for wall colors. You're gonna have some black and white, you know, tile options and accents around windows, which is still gonna be a wonderful thing. But again, neutral colors. Think your blacks, your whites, your creams, your browns, some of your tans, tans and warmer grays. And the last trend we will talk about for 2023 is actually for bathrooms, not kitchens at all. Something that is back. We actually started doing it a couple years ago, but the first client that did this, I was like, oh, that's cute. I guess they're just, you know, doing their own thing. They don't care what's going on in the world. <laughs> but I was wrong. They were right. They knew it was coming down the pipeline as far as design trends are for bathrooms. But in bathrooms, you're gonna see a huge comeback of bidet toilets, smart toilets, and medicine cabinets. All of the things that we thought we were gonna get rid of in the 70s are back, and they are better than ever. And guys, I really love them both. So what I'm talking about in bidet toilets is people are spending a thousand bucks, you know, 500 to $2,000 on these toilets, but they have a wash feature, they have a phone feature, they have automatic flush features, they've got warming seat features, they've got light features. Anything you could ever want on a toilet, they make them now, and we keep putting them in houses, and clients are totally loving them. So here's a picture here, uh, Toto's a big brand. We've got clients, like I said, they can flush the toilet from their phone, which I guess if you have kids might be a great thing. If you know you have guests coming over, you can just go flush every toilet in your house to make sure everything is gone. If you're a boy mom, you know what I'm talking about. Uh, and the medicine cabinets, they are a great, great way to get rid of the junk on the countertop. We just build them in. It does cost a little more for the framing and a lot of the units can be more expensive, especially if they have outlets inside, charging stations, LED lights, but we are doing this in so many bathrooms and it's really cool to see these um, features from the past come back in an upgraded version. So take my word for it, if you're planning a bathroom renovation, you'll definitely wanna look into medicine cabinets and bidet smart toilets. So we've talked about trends, now we'll talk about five mistakes that I hope you don't make as you're doing your renovations in this coming year. First up is matching metals. So what I mean by this is there was a, an era, actually a lot of times in the past, but really in the 90s you saw in new construction, and you still see it you know, a good bit today, where a builder will pick a package and every single metal in the house is exactly the same. So meaning your knobs, your light fixtures, your faucets, if the house was going to be um, you know, a chrome, every fixture in the house was done in chrome. We are totally straying away from that in 2023, and we have been for the last few years. It's okay to mix metals, even in the same room. You don't have to feel like, okay, this room is all gonna be chrome and this room's all gonna be brushed gold. Uh, we will say, that right now the brush gold the warm tones just as we talked about before the warm tones are back but the mistake is doing everything the same so you can have rooms with different uh, colored metals in my house for instance downstairs in our basement we've got some black up here in the kitchen we have the brush gold in the bathroom which is right off the living room which is just straight through the space here uh, that has chrome fixtures so it's okay to totally vary it up each room can be its own experience, as long as there's some tie-in features where if you're working with a designer like myself, we'll make sure that there's still some elements that tie the spaces together without being completely matchy-matchy. So do not, the mistake is, do not, or the mistake is matching your metals. So don't do it. Let's just mix it up and have some fun. The second mistake I wanna talk about is choosing the wrong trim package. And what I mean by trim is your baseboards and your crown molding for your space. If you're doing a kitchen renovation or especially in a basement, make sure to choose the widest one that you can afford. We do even ones like my house right now, we have an eight inch baseboard with a little piece at the top. So it's a nine inch baseboard. It really elevates it, especially if you have tall ceilings, you don't want it to feel so squatty. And if you're investing in doing uh, you know, a basement renovation, doing a little four inch baseboard is very base and again I know budget limits in some areas but if you can make sure to upgrade your trim package make it a little custom do something a little bit different we've got a trim package where I sort of design little features to make it stand out and be a little different than everybody else's so many times people just grab whatever's available at Home Depot and just match whatever in the rest of their house when you really could take it to the next level and we're doing a kitchen you know in our kitchen uh, we have we took our cabinets to the ceiling we had a little extra space so we've got some beefier trim up there it really helps it feel custom more rich Rich, more thought out uh, and it just gives it that finishing touch that no one may walk in and be like oh I love your tall baseboards but it really helps the overall design so mistake number two is just shorting yourself on a trim package 
The third mistake we're gonna talk about in design trends for 2020, 2023 is distressing things. Gone are the days of distressing all your cabinets and making everything look worn and a bunch of aged wood. It's still beautiful to have maybe an aged 100 year old mantle, but we don't need to be distressing the whole fireplace around it and making sure that everything looks aged and worn. Same thing even goes with rock and stone and brick. I know this is gonna you know, offend some people, but we wanna make sure thing look, things look more clean and modern as we head into 2023. You don't need to have every brick you know, scuffed around the edges. Clean, fresh, um, modern lines are wonderful. So mistake number three is distressing everything. The fourth mistake we want to discuss is lacking originality. We really don't want to see you guys do that, especially if you're working with a company like ours where design services are included. Make your space original. You don't need to go on Instagram and Pinterest and copy what every other influencer is doing. It becomes so boring. Allow us to help you make the space fit your personality and your family. Do a cool light fixture. Add some funky wallpaper. Pick an accent color to you know, put throughout the space. Choose a countertop that maybe you haven't seen before, but really speaks to you. You don't have to do a carbon copy to make a design beautiful. We wanna help it reflect you. So mistake number four is lacking originality. Stop, let's be creative. And the last mistake we're gonna talk about is actually for the exterior of your house. We don't do much exterior work, but when you're designing the inside of a house, the outside is reflected. And it's something that I think so many designers across the nation, maybe especially here in the Southeast, really want to share with the general public. Some of you may hate me for it, but I'm gonna go ahead and say it. Can we please stop doing black and white houses? <laughs> and if you know what I mean, you know what I mean. That's everything you're seeing everywhere is the country house in the white siding and black trim we're over it. We don't want to do it. Nobody wants to do it. Every house going up looks exactly the same. It's super frustrating, especially for a designer and the aesthetic of a whole area can just totally change when every single house looks the same. At least in the craftsman era, the shapes were the same, but the color tones were different. But right now it is just black and white houses everywhere. So please let's get back to creative, put some stone back in, add some brick, stop painting everything white. And the biggest thing is, if you're gonna do a black and white house, there's ways to do it properly and ways that look crazy. So here's an, an example of a beautiful house that has been done. If you see there's different color tones, little wood accents, um, the trim is, is a different tone than the shutters. So there's some beautiful ways to do it. If you're gonna do it, I still think you should move forward. But there's ways to do this completely wrong. And this is when you know a designer has not been involved and it's someone just taking a trend and taking it too literally, which is usually where the problem arises. But check out this house. I don't know if y'all like that, I'm sorry. It's way too harsh. It takes what is supposed to be a beautiful aesthetic of a black and white house and makes it feel more like Tammy Faye <laughs> and her overdone mascara is what it reminds me of. So again, if you're gonna do the outside of a house, some exterior painting, white is fine, my house is white, but you've gotta balance it with some other tones. Don't take the trend of black and white and take it so literally that you go far off the thing. Uh, but really, from builders across America and the Southeast especially, please, let's move away from that. So thank y'all for watching. Hopefully that was helpful and insightful to know what's going on in the world of renovation and design and what trends and mistakes to do and what to avoid. And uh, now that I've done my video, I'm gonna go take off this sparkly shirt I got all dressed up for you, but honestly, keeping it real, like I still have uh, sweatpants and slippers on to film this video. So hope you guys are having a great day and we'll see you soon.